Hello, konnichiwa, and welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys, and appliances just to find out what's inside. I'm David, and in this episode, I'd like to talk about smartwatches. Let's start with a bit of backstory. This is my Pebble Time, which I've had for quite some time. And this is my daily driver, my everyday carry. It's what I wear day in, day out. And it's getting on a bit. For me, it's more or less perfect. Uh, I have had a full Android Wear OS smartwatch and I barely used any of the features above what I can get on my Pebble. And the Pebble has better battery life and it's a smaller package. I really like it. But I do appreciate that not everybody wants to wear what is obviously a smartwatch. And there is something socially acceptable about them, but I understand that there are still people that like, want to flaunt, have the status symbol of a physical mechanical watch or a classical watch, or even have some sort of sentimental value on a mechanical watch. That's absolutely fine. I'm in a similar position. I have a watch with sentimental value that I really want to wear. But having worn a smartwatch since the first Pebbles came out in 2013-ish, I think, or was it 2015? Whenever the first Pebbles came out, I found it really hard to wear a dumb watch or a classical timepiece because I missed out on notifications because like so many people I have my phone on silent or at least very quiet all of the time. But that's where today's item comes in. Now I don't know if you've clocked it but wearing a classic timepiece gives you the opportunity to wear this. This is not just the clasp, this is a full smart wristband. In particular, this is the Sony Wena, W-E-N-A, for Wear Electronics Naturally 3. Let's get inside. This Wena 3, they describe as a smart accessory or a wristband, which I feel is a little bit unfair because the device itself is tiny and it comes with so many accessories and options, it's absolutely unreal. Um, the presentation boxes and the sort of off-the-shelf devices you can get for this include one or two traditional mechanical movement timepieces, uh, often a very fancy strap, and then you have the smart aspect of it, which is designed to sit on the inside of your wrist, just about here. And I really like even this basic one, which came with so many attachments and bits that I have barely worked out what they are all for so far. So it came with this black metal band, which you can then use the watch or the, the smart piece as the clasp, which is pretty cool. Um, but you also came with a sort of silicony rubber strap where you can just wear it as a normal timepiece. And in that configuration, it wouldn't look really much different from like a Fitbit charge, I think. It also came with these two little clasps, so you could put a traditional 22 millimeter device on one of their continuous bands. Uh, it came with all sorts of spring pins for attaching straps and all sorts of stuff. The configuration is pretty limitless, and the timepieces that come with them themselves are pretty cool if you're into that sort of thing. With this, you may already be grasping the issue. This is a Japan only product and as such all the instructions, all the documentation and yes even the accompanying app are all in Japanese and frankly I have been using Google Translate to get any of this working and give it a try. So this is the size of the device itself and compared to the Fitbits I think this is really thin and it's a nice package. Uh, the little optical bump here for blood, uh, for pulse rate and uh, biometrics sort of sits on the inside of your wrist and that's, that strikes me as way more flush than anything else. And actually, even if you wore this as a standard timepiece, I think that's, that's respectable. I think it's a smaller footprint than the Fitbits. Uh, this little thing here, which I have mixed feelings about. I've had a few smartwatches and their chargers have always been USB-A with a lead to something with a couple of pogo pins in it. And I've always found the pogo pins fill up with grime and dirt and corrode and make that very challenging to charge. 
Now this little box here does away with that lead and comes with a USB A to C lead. So it's got USB C on here and that just spring clips onto the watch. And then it charges like that, which I like. It doesn't take away the issue with the pogo pins, but at least it's standard USB type C now. But I feel like this might be easy to lose too. That's kind of a time will tell type thing. So if I now turn this on, really quick to boot. You can see it's got a little um, monochrome OLED screen. It is touch screen. It does all your fitness tracking, heart rate, sleep tracking, uh, oxygen saturation, and a few other parametrics that I do not understand. Uh, then you've got notifications, step count. You can do alarm clock, uh, time, no notifications. Uh, you can actually do payments, NFC payments through this, but because it's a Japanese only app, it's only Japanese locale services. So not a lot of good if you're out of Japan. Weather, alarm clock, timer. You can use this as a remote camera shutter, which is kind of cool. So you could set your phone up on a tripod somewhere and use your watch to take a photo. I know you can do it on other platforms. It's just a case that on such a small device, it's a nice little feature to have added. Uh, you can do music control if you've gotten that paired up. Uh, Alexa which again, I haven't set up. I'm not sure if that'll work outside of Japan or whether there's some integration that means it's local, localized to Japan only, but you can use Alexa. This does have an onboard microphone, which I believe is this little hole up here. Um, you've got Find, which is Find My Phone. So you can press that and it'll set off an alert on your phone. Great idea. I've used that a lot on my Android OS devices. And then the settings, there's nothing particularly interesting here. Although note that the watch itself has an English mode. So I could put this all in English. I was using Google Translate originally on this to get the Japanese translated. So it does actually function in English. It's just the app is Japanese only. I think we just have the device in English, but not the app. I don't know. Anyway, let's get this powered off. Oh, uh, also you may be able to read on here, it's actually water resistant to five bar, which is 50 meters waterproof. That's astonishingly impressive for something with a microphone on the outside. Oh, hadn't expected the sides to come out. So that side has something there, but it doesn't manifest on the outside of the casing, but it has a big old hole in the side there. I wonder if we'll find out what that is later. The entire back of this now looks like it's injection molded on, which must mean the only way in is through this glass on the front, which is the touchscreen, which is a real shame that there's not more repairability to it, but something that's this well water rated, I guess it's not too much of a surprise. Bear with me, I'll go find some heat. Don't tell my wife. I mean, it's clearly not mine, is it? You can probably already tell that screen is broken. You can see you've got some fracture lines down it. It's a real shame. Oh, and it's turned on. Fantastic. Okay, so what we've learnt is curved OLED display, very fragile, and then the zebra stripe attached to the back, also very fragile. Connector for the display and one for the touchscreen. Strange combination of connectors, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I would guess this coil around here is probably the NFC antenna. On the screen protector that was on the display, there's a couple of little notches there and there. And I haven't really paid much attention, but if you look on the back, there's actually clear spots on the glass or one-way sections on the glass. And I've got a couple of sensors here. I can't tell you what they are. I'm guessing one of them's a brightness light level type meter, which will just give the, the idea if it's in an automatic brightness setting, how the other one's a status LED. <laughs> so that's an LED. That's your photo sensor. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, photo sensor out. So that NFC antenna, it's got two little, two little pins under there. Yay! <laughs> Battery makes a fair volume of that. It's lithium ion, obviously. 80 milliamp hour. That is a tiny cell and look, it actually fits within four of my one centimeter squares on here. So there was a little copper probe on both sides of this going back through holes in the injection molded plastic onto this contact here 
and this contact here. Maybe they're using those two metal sides for the pulse rate enhancement, because um, am I right in saying on the Apple Watch you have to touch it, you have to hold the crown and the body, and it uses that for sort of capacitive sensing, but they're using that for... That'd be very clever. Sony, what do you expect? It's main IC. It's actually left the microphone on the side and the tactile switch is not on the main board. I thought it would be. This little connector has got a main connector which connects to the motherboard, optical sensor for biometrics, so heart rate sensor. On the back you can see that's the asymmetric weight for the vibration motor. That is the uh, photo sensor for sort of uh, brightness of the screen. That's the LED for status, like charging. Got a tiny little tactile switch just there, in the center, and there's the microphone. Up here, got the two connectors for digitizer and the OLED screen. There is the motherboard. It is tiny. And I guess that's kind of an advantage of using the OLED screen, is that the electronics driving it can be so much lower power. It's not like people are expecting this to have storage on board to save pictures and messages and all sorts. And you can just make out on here, there and there, where those two copper prongs from the sides came in. I suspect that is probably the Bluetooth chip, because obviously this connects over Bluetooth. One of these is likely to be a power and charge controller. One will be a microcontroller and one will probably be a display driver. You've got two pads up here, there and there where the NFC touches, NFC coil, and for the test pads on the back. In a surprise to perhaps nobody, the, the small packaging, I think more than overall build quality of this, is very Sony-esque. If you are after an all-encompassing smartwatch with GPS and music playback and a color touch screen, then there are some fairly obvious one go-to devices that you would use. If you're a little bit more like me, where you were just after some notifications so you didn't constantly look at your phone, your, your options are limited. But this device, I just feel, is such a good little package because it can be worn as the boot show itself on the top of the wrist, or you can wear it on the back of your wrist and just use it to add some smarts to an otherwise mechanical or analog watch, which I think for a lot of people would be quite appealing, being able to use that hero timepiece but with some smarts. Reminds me a few years ago of a device called the Kronos, I think, that looked like a CR2032 battery that you'd sort of shove under your watch and all you'd get is a little vibration and a colored spot on your wrist to tell you that there is a notification but being able to see and uh, see what notifications have come in is it's a great feature and i think it's a great device and a great design and something we don't see from other manufacturers so i think what i'm trying to say is sony i really like the Wenner range please bring it out of Japan into other countries. There must be a market for it. I'd buy one. If you have an idea for a teardown, please let me know over at the Element 14 community. Thank you so much for watching. Tomo arigato. I'll see you on the next one.